Hey everyone, welcome to Tent Wisdom number 109. Um, today is going to be a throwback to essentially Tent Wisdom number one, which was uh, me by myself um, demonstrating Tent Wiz. And today I won't be demonstrating Tent Wiz, but we will be using it. And I want to demonstrate, I guess we could just say an overall concept. <clears throat> and we're going to use Tent Wiz to apply it today. Now, when I say concept, I'm kind of underselling what we're about to show you. Um, what I'm about to show you, I think, can improve every single tent shop starting today, starting tomorrow, meaning you can apply this immediately. We're going to go through how to do it. We're going to answer any questions. Um, and you're going to see that what I'm going to show you takes maybe an extra minute or two. And it's going to change the way you do business. These are big claims, but with big claims, I will have big proof to back it up. And um, I'm really excited to do this today live um, so that we can answer any questions and I can really, you know, make sure that anybody who wants to do this um, knows what they're doing by the end of this live stream. So we're going to jump right in. So what's up, Haas? Thanks for joining. So yeah, we're going to jump right in and I'm going to bring up TintWiz. And basically what I'm going to show you today, like I said, it's going to take a couple minutes. If you're not a TintWiz Tint user, it doesn't matter. Watch it anyway and you'll see how simple it is. And then if you want to give it a shot, you can sign up to TintWiz with no payment information. It takes just a second. So like literally anybody, whether you're using TintWiz now or you're not, could be doing this as soon as tonight as soon as tomorrow morning. And I'm guaranteeing you results as soon as tomorrow, as soon as the next day and so on. And the reason why <clears throat> um, I'm especially excited is be, uh, to, to bring this up, not only because I'm seeing and hearing from dealers like how much it's working and positively impacting their business, but also I'm also hearing from other uh, dealers that are slow and you know, we're, we're just at the beginning of the winter season. Like it, it's normal if, if you haven't slowed down that much and it's already Thanksgiving, but you know, once Christmas comes, I think with with some exceptions, most shops are going to feel that real slowness around that Christmas time in the beginning of January, and then it's going to pick up. But what I'm saying is, this technique can be used right now, and I, I just can't guarantee it enough. You just have to do it, and it will just take a couple seconds to do every day. So let's jump in to do that. Um, show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to pull up TintWiz on the right, and what we're looking at here is TintWiz in mobile screen. So, okay, let's take a normal phone call or email that you get. Uh, phone rings, you pick it up, you say, you know, hey, Tint Shop, how can I help you? And person on the other end says, you know, hey, my name's Jane and I'm looking to get my car tinted. How much is it? And you say, well, what's the year, make, and model of your car? She tells you maybe a 2012 Toyota Prius and you say, well, it's going to be $180. That's with a lifetime warranty and it's going to cover all your side windows and the back window. And then from there, she's going to either tell you, you know, I'd love to do it. <clears throat> we're going to ignore that scenario because that's a win already. And we're going to focus on the other scenarios. She's going to tell you maybe, all right, I'll call you back. I'll think about it. I got a lower price elsewhere. Let me speak to my husband. Let me speak to, let me think of whatever it is. I'll get it scheduled and I'll call you back. Most of the time, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, those calls come in and they go out and they're forgotten. And those are seeds and they're seeds that you can grow um, and you just need to put a little bit of effort into growing those seeds. And I'm going to show you how you can do it. And it's um, like I've been saying over and over, it's a game changer. So instead of just taking that call, giving that quote, hanging up the phone and moving on with your day, this is what you're going to do. As you take that call, you're just going to simply hit add contact and say, who am I speaking with? And she told you her name's Jane. And you're going to say, what's your phone number? Just in case we get disconnected. She's going to give you her phone number and just simply type it in. We're not going to do anything else. We're just going to get their name and their phone number, right? It might just be that. Um, that's all we get. We're going to hit save contact. I'm going to hit add project. And I'm going to say, and what's the year, make and model of your vehicle? And she told us it's a Toyota Prius and it was a 2012. Perfect. <clears throat> so the price to tint your car is $180 for all side windows on the back, any shade you'd like, and that includes a lifetime warranty. 
And at that point, maybe she says, okay, thank you. I'll, you know, I'll give you a ring back. I'll call you to schedule, whatnot. What you're going to do is hang up the phone with her. You're going to hit create proposal. And we're going to type here, good. And what we're going to do, follow with me. We're going to do expel CS. And we're going to put maybe a CS and we put that 180 in there. And maybe we even show her a discount. We say normally it's 200. So we're showing her a little discount. As you can see, there's some notes on the film right here, automatically populating. I'm going to move on and we're going to do better. And this is going to be expel XR. We'll go XR black 30. And we're going to do a price of, let's say, 350 on this one. And normally 400. I'm going to hit save solution. And I'm going to hit add one more solution. And on this one, I'm going to do expel XR. And we'll do the XR plus. And this one's going to be the best of the best. And we're going to put best, highest heat blocking. And we're going to price that at 450. Perfect. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to hit send. I'm going to hit send. And yes, and that's it. I'm, I'm done. That's the whole thing. That's everything I needed to show you today. I mean, there is a lot more, but that's all I'm asking you to do to see the guaranteed results that I'm talking about. Now, what we just did was we just sent Jane a proposal to her phone through text message. And you can see that proposal now status is sent. And we'll actually be able to see when she views it. It'll go to a proposal status of viewed. But the point is, we've just sent her a proposal. Now, let's take a look at what that proposal looks like. If I hit the view button, you're going to see it's going to have your company logo at the top. It's going to have your business address and phone number. It's going to have her, his name, their phone number. It'll have a proposal ID that's automatically assigned as well as the date. It'll have the year, make, and model of their vehicle. And then as you can see, they have three options here. They have the good, and they could select that one. They have the better, and they could select that one. And they have the best, and they could select that one. And you can see they have the option to approve the proposal um, from their phone. Now, let's explain what's going on here. <clears throat> Imagine you shopping around for something, what it, like Tint. You're going to call a company, you're going to get a price. If it was the first company you called, you'll probably call another company and you'll ask for another price. And maybe you'll call two, three, four companies. Now, realistically, where are you keeping track of who's quoting you what? Most of the time, probably in your head. And then when you, maybe you took some notes, who knows? And then at the end of it, you may or may not make a decision. And maybe you pick a company, maybe you don't, maybe you put it off for a little bit of time. And that is realistically what's happening with a lot of those phone calls that are coming in that you're pricing really quickly over the phone and they're hanging up. And then you're relying on them to remember you, to hopefully have written your information down and to, you know, whether accidentally or on purpose, call you back and schedule. And what you're doing here is by taking an extra minute of your time, you're sending your information is in a professional digital proposal to their phone, which everybody keeps to them like more than anything. Everybody has their phone with them more than anything. So you're sending a proposal with all your information, your logo, your address, your phone, and their options there. You're giving them the opportunity to reference that back anytime they want. They can not only see the film you offered to them, but they can also see some add-ons as well or some upsells. So they could see, wow, there's an actual film that blocks more heat and you know, there's the best of the best, this makes it interesting. Now, if they called you for a quote, maybe they didn't even ask you what brand it was. But here, because you send them a quote, they're gonna see, okay, it's for Expel. They can look and um, maybe look up Expel, they'll see what a great brand it is, and then that starts the question of, oh, there's different types of films, what do you use, and so on. So this is one minute of time that pays you back in so many different ways. Now, there's more that I wanna show you, because this isn't just it. But this is, look, this is just it in the sense, if you do this, I can guarantee your results. I can guarantee it. I can guarantee it and you can come back and you can, you can let's discuss it publicly if it doesn't work for you. If you try it, because I can guarantee it. So simply by getting their name, getting their phone number and create, creating a quick proposal from your phone or computer, you're going to have a higher closing percentage. You're going to have people who upsell themselves. But I'm going to show you some additional ways that this is going to benefit you. So <clears throat> let's show you some different options in the proposal. If we get back into that proposal, we gave three options here, but we could even do better. What we could do is we could add a fourth option and we could click option. We could type in for the solution, solution title, windshield, clear heat blocking. 
And we could put in, let's say for this one, we're going to do expel. And we'll do prime plus, where is it? XR plus rather, 70. And let's charge 200, normally 250. And you can see obviously the notes populate here. And for this one, I'm going to click allow select together. Okay. And I'm going to hit save solution. And now I'm going to refresh that proposal. And you're going to see here, now the customer has a fourth option. So they could pick, do they want this tint? Do they want this tint? And so on. They could pick one of these options, but they can also add a windshield. So on their own, they can, you know, read through this and they can see, wow, okay, so this is the option they quoted me 180. What's this? Okay, this is a higher performance option and so on. And then they can see, wow, I can tint my windshield. I didn't know there was a clear heat blocking film and so on. So this isn't a way that you can give an option to upsell. And you can keep creating endless amounts of solutions here, um, as, mu as many as you'd like. So another example could be, like we can go back in here and we could say, plus sunroof. We could even get crazy and we could say ceramic pro bronze and we could throw in a bronze package here and let's say that's going to be 850. We click allow select together and again we go back to that proposal and you see now there's a fifth option. So they could pick, let's say I want the XR plus on the car, I want to add a windshield and I'll add the bronze package. And you know, even if they don't add the bronze package, even if they don't add the windshield, this is seeding it in their head. So when they do come in, they've already kind of become familiar with it and you can bring it up. You know, I included the Ceramic Pro bronze package on there because I saw that you have a newer car. I saw that you have an older car and I thought that you might benefit from this sort of protection, maybe a paint correction, whatnot. It's it's a way to introduce the products ahead of time, and you will see that some of the times you'll sell them without doing anything, just by sending the proposal. Now, another way that you can spiffy up this proposal is by clicking tap to attach photos and files to the solution. So in any of these solutions, you can at attach pictures. So if we were quoting here, like we said, a 2012 Toyota Prius, we can include other pictures of Priuses that we've tinted before. We can include images that relate to the window film itself. Um, and I'm gonna show you real quickly, if we were looking for other pictures of Priuses we tinted. Now, again, this is now something you could do once you've started using TinWiz, but you can always go into your projects and you could search for, let's say, a Prius. And you can pull up other Priuses that you may have done. And if you saved pictures, they're gonna be right here in the project's attachments and you'll see those before and after pictures. And I can pull up an example of that. So let's pretend this was for a Model 3. If I go into projects and I click Model 3, I can then sort by status for the ones that are paid in full. And I know this one has pictures because I use it as an example often. And you can see, I'd be able to pull up pictures of the vehicle um, and hopefully you take clearer pictures than these. Um, and you can pull up before and after pictures of the vehicle and then you could potentially attach those to the proposal that you're sending. So this is another way that you can go up and beyond so that your proposals um, have a higher chance of being sold. But again, all you really have to do is create those three options at least and send it to them. Even if you were to just create one option and send it to them, it puts your business phone number, your address, your logo in their phone through text message. It's proposal, it's, it's professional, it's easy for them to reference it and pull it up. Okay, so it's simple as that. If they don't get it tinted that day, a week later when they think, okay, I wanna get my car tinted, now I have an opportunity, they're gonna remember and click on your proposal and approve it or contact you directly. Now, there's more. So if you, let's say you say, okay, um, my schedule's not super busy, right? Is there anything I can do to follow up? Yes. You could simply go to your projects, right? So I could go into here on the menu and I can click on my, pro on my proposals rather. And I can go into proposals and I can actually sort by, I can see all my proposals. I can see proposals that have been sent and not viewed yet. So this is a proposal that has been sent, but not viewed. And I know that because the status is sent. If it was viewed, it would go to viewed and this, and it would show you when and when they, like the day and the time that they actually viewed that proposal. So what I'm suggesting you do is if you have time or you do this once a week, simply go in there and say, all right, let me go through the proposals that I've sent and they haven't viewed them. And what I could do is I can just click in there and I can go into the proposal and go into the uh, proposal by going to manage 
and I can hit send. And I can resend that proposal to that person with just a couple clicks. So you can go through and resend all your proposals that haven't been viewed a day later, two days later, and you can even do it for the ones that have been viewed. You can just resend it to them. So take a couple of minutes, go through all your proposals and just resend it to them. But the point is they're all there. It takes a couple of minutes and all your customers are going to get that text message and potentially an email if you got their email and they are going to convert. It's really that simple. So like, all things aside, anything you think, you know, hey, it's hard to get used to a new system. Um, I don't use TintWiz now or I, I take too many phone calls to do it. Whatever it is, try it. Just try it. Take that extra minute. You can call back that person if you miss a call. But it's not about answering phone calls. It's about selling jobs. So you want to be able to, like, you, you spent the money on an ad. You, you know, you, you somehow earn that phone call from a customer. Like, why not? nourish that seed a little further than just giving them a price verbally, just like every other tin shop and hang up the phone. When you can invest an extra minute or two, send them a proposal, change the game, convert higher, and also be able to follow up with your customers. But there's more. So you can do this for PPF. You can obviously do this for absolutely anything. Um, but what's also nice is if you are saying, and I, I really do, if like, if anybody has any questions um, or if you're like, hey, this is why I think that won't work for me, please put it in the chat. Don't hesitate. I won't take it as heckling. I want to address questions because sometimes people think of things that, you know, they think of something from a perspective that I haven't made clear. Um, they're seeing something that I'm not seeing and I'd rather address it than you think about it. So please don't ever hesitate. I don't take it as heckling. It's awesome if you have a question. And I want to address a question and maybe argue with somebody who's not here right now. And I want to take on the position of somebody who says, listen, I'm in the middle of tinting a car. I do not have the time, even that extra two minutes to send a proposal. Okay. No problem. Well, first of all, Chamal said, sometimes they call from an office number. Let me handle that one first. And he said, and you can't send a text message. That's true. But if we think of automotive, especially automotive, most people I think call from a cell phone. I think most people aren't calling from their office or from their work for, for a um, vehicle. However, I tried to really simplify it by not getting an email address, but getting an email address is super, super easy. All you need to do to get an email address is, you know, Hey, what's your name? I'm Jane, perfect. And Jane, what's your phone number in case we get disconnected? And so on. And then, and what's your email? I can send you a copy of this quote to your email address when we hang up the phone. Simple as that. Or you can say, I can send you a copy of the uh, a confirmation to your email as soon as we get off the phone. Most people will instinctively react by giving you their email. It's a very common thing. It just takes you to ask it in a fluent way. Um, you know, you ask for their name, they tell it to you. You ask for their phone number, they tell it to you. You ask for their email, they'll tell it to you. And if they don't tell it to you, most of the time, they're on their cell phone regardless. Um, if they do tell it to you, then when you send that proposal, so if we go back in there to, let's see, get into that proposal, and we go to resend it, you'll see that in that send area right there, there's a spot for an email. And if we had their email, it would have already filled it in. And if you wanted to type in an email right here, you could obviously just type it and so on and send it to an email. So basically whether you're obviously best off getting their email and their phone number and then sending the proposal with the same amount of effort to both places instead of just one. However, the best place is really text message. Text message will convert way better than email if you were going like one versus the other because emails tend to accumulate junk. Um, you know, we're a business, so maybe we keep our emails a little cleaner than most because people don't want to miss out on opportunities. But people sometimes can get 50 or 100 spam emails a day. And when you send a proposal to them, you know, it's just going to get in with those other emails or text message grabs their attention instantly. And it's right there and pretty easy to reference anytime. So I do want to address the question that I brought up and I want to get these comments on here. Um, Oh, so Brian asked, once it's approved, what's the next step? So once the proposal's approved, um, in the let me show you how they appro approve it, just for those who aren't familiar with it, and then we'll take next step. So let's get into that contact. That was a project from earlier. Let's get back into Jane with the Toyota Prius. And I'm going to open that proposal, and this is just how the client sees it. Like, 
this is the live version. So the client's going to look through here and to approve the proposal, they're going to click on the option that they want. Maybe they add a windshield, hopefully add a ceramic pro package or ceramic coating package or whatnot. Now they do have the option of typing in any notes here. So you'll find that most customers will type in, you know, like, um, Saturday 9 AM or, you know, um, soonest available or, or whatever it is, um, here. And then, they can also optionally type their name if they want. At the same time, if they don't type either of these, it's still going to let them approve the proposal. But we'll assume, um, you'll see most of the time, they'll include some notes and so on. They hit approve proposal. Now, when they approve the proposal, the solutions that they pick get locked into the proposal. So now their proposal is locked in for that $1,500 amount. They're not seeing the options they didn't pick. We're just seeing the options they did. And they also see a confirmation here. The proposal was approved Wednesday, December 12th, 421, which is my local time, and so on. And they, you know, the business will be in touch um, from there. So um, if they now here's here's the variable. If they include the day and time that they would like to get scheduled for, then your next step is simply just going up here to a uh, schedule appointment and you can click that and we can click um, that we're scheduling an installation. We can pick which member of the team will be doing it or leave it unassigned if not. And we can pick the day and time that we're scheduling this for. So if they put Saturday in there, maybe we look at Saturday and maybe they said Saturday anytime. So let's say Saturday at 9 a.m. And from here, we have it on the on the calendar right here, Saturday at 9 a.m. I can simply hit confirm and submit. And they're going to get an email and a text message confirming that appointment at 9 a.m. on Saturday, December 5th. It'll have your business's address in there. It'll have your phone number in case they need to contact you with any changes. So essentially, if they indicated when they would like to be scheduled, then that is your next step. And you could potentially avoid communication. Now, do I recommend that? I think even if you were to do that next step, it's best to still send them a text message or a call manually and just touch base with them and say, hey, Jane, we really appreciate you choosing us for your window film and we look forward to seeing you on December 5th. You should have got a confirmation to your text and email. And they'll say, yeah, I did get it. Thank you so much. I'll say, perfect. Our address is in that email and um, text. If you need to reference it, we'll see you on Saturday. Now, I understand the idea of, well, it's better if I automate it and so on, but automation is great in certain parts of the business, but those personal touches where you can take an extra minute to call the customer, pay you back in droves because that customer is less likely to flake on you. That customer is more likely to like come into this scenario, like already trusting you, already happy to be with your business and so on. And then that customer is more likely to leave you a great review afterwards because you know, they remember that sort of thing that you contacted them and so on. They remember that they got a text message as well and how thorough you are. So that's one potential scenario for after you get an appro approved proposal. The next scenario could be simply send them a text, say, hey, we um, appreciate you choosing us to get your windows tinted. These are the two or three available days, um, which would be best for you. Or you ask them, what is your preferred two days, um, best two days and times to come in and you can go back and forth, whether that be through text message or through phone. I don't recommend email, but of course you can do email, but text is really the best. If you have to choose one way and you have their mobile number, text I think is the least intrusive, most high like result you're going to get. Um, I think people love text. They're able to text back. If they're not happy with text, you can always call them. They can always call you, but text gets to them without intruding. They're not like looking at their phone ringing, wondering if they should pick it up, especially if they're at work and whatnot. So um, shoot them a text. You can even include in a text. If you'd prefer I call you, just let me know or give us a ring. Um, so that is the way to contact them. Now, as far as like when a customer approves a proposal, again, just to point out for people who are not familiar, you're going to get a app notification here in the notifications that Jane approved a proposal. You'll also get a notification through email and you'll also get an actual app notification. Now, in this case, we've already scheduled the installation. Okay. So the status of this job has moved to install scheduled. Okay. But if I drop down the statuses here of the jobs, you're going to see that there's also one called pending install schedule. And you'll see that the jobs, basically the leads, they follow a status automatically as you go through the sales cycle, the sales process. And what I'm, what I'm getting to is 
One of the most helpful statuses is simply pending install schedule, because what that is, is that's a project that has an approved proposal, but does not have a scheduled installation yet. So that means that anytime somebody schedules an installation, or I'm sorry, approves a proposal and you need to schedule an installation, you can always go to your projects and you can sort them by status and you can just simply go to all the ones that are pending installation and you can see those. And again, those are going to be projects that have an approved proposal, but do not have a install scheduled yet. Once you schedule that install, then the project goes to install scheduled automatically and so on. Um, and, and basically it follows through this series of um, statuses. You can also manually set statuses at any point if you jump around. Um, now, I don't want to get too, too far away from the main topic of today's live stream, which is you have to be sending a proposal to every single inquiry you get. It allows you to increase your odds of closing that customer, and it allows you to follow up and resend them that proposal so easily, whether you resend them the proposal and then send them a manual text, or you just resend the proposal and wait for them to respond. So John, John Ames said he'd uh, love it, would like to see an integration that allows customers to book their own appointments based on availability. You're going to see that before your busy season in 21. You'll see the ability for customers to directly build or directly schedule their own um, consultations for flat glass, installations for flat and for, um, for automotive completely on their own, completely hands off if you'd like. Now, like I said, and you'll see that directly in TintWiz, something that's built in. It's not going to require third-party integration. It'll be built into TintWiz, and you're going to see that early in 2021 before the busy season hits. Now, I, I want to touch on that subject. I also, let's stop there. Let me talk touch on that subject. So, okay, we're going to use the analogy that I've used a couple times, but I want to use it again, okay? I'd like to think about the sales process as a giant cornfield, okay? And we're going through a cornfield maze and we're trying to get to the other side. The other side is victory. The other side is sales and a happy, healthy business. And what happens is sometimes we can go through that maze and sometimes we can find a path that looks super good and we're like, wow, this path solves some things, right? But when you go down that path, it's a dead end. And it's a dead end because it puts you in a direction you didn't need to be going in. It solved some things, but it left you without others. And what I'm trying to get you to visualize with that is there are some things that sometimes seem like a solution and they're not all they crack up to be. They're cracked up to be. Now, I'm not saying automatic, like letting a customer schedule an appointment's not a great thing. It is a great thing. I love it. That's why we're building it at TinWiz. I wouldn't put it in TinWiz if I didn't think it was the future, the current, and something that's valuable and that works. It just wouldn't be in there. It's, and wouldn't be coming. But with that said, I think there's an enormous value to capturing a customer's lead, okay? Having their phone and email, being able to have those chances to be courteous with them, okay? I understand not wanting to deal with a bunch of price shoppers, but when you start to change the Rubik's Cube, you start to kind of change the degree you're looking at things and you do things like this, you start to change those price shoppers into actual customers. You start to kind of close more of those phone calls so you don't feel like, wow, I'm taking a million calls and not scheduling so many people. It starts to change things in a way that you start to say, okay, I kind of get it. I'd like to capture the person's name and phone number and I don't want them to know the price up front because I want to be able to present the price to them in a way that is beautiful, that is professional. Whether it be your, your voice over the phone and hopefully it's a digital proposal to their phone and email. Those are opportunities to win your customer. So by automating that and stripping that out of your sales process, while yes, you are relieving yourself of a lot of things, you're actually creating your, a new kind of dynamic that takes away opportunities, okay? It takes away an opportunity because it takes away an opportunity to really deliver that that price in a, in a way that explains it to the customer, explains it in a way. Do they get to not hear the tone of your voice? They get to not hear how excited you are to service them. You don't get to ask them questions. Is this the first vehicle you've ever tinted or have you had tint on your vehicle before? You don't get the chance to congratulate them on their new purchased vehicle. You don't get the chance to send them a digital quote afterwards and a follow-up. So I get it. And if you like it and it works for your business and you can support that even during slower times and it keeps you steady and it, it's just the way you want to run your business, I get it. And I, it, 
why we're going to do it and so on. But I really want to draw that distinction and show that there's different ways to cook a steak. There's different ways to run a business and you can do it in any way and you can find success in any way you do it, but they're all going to kind of take you down different roads, present different opportunities, but also present different challenges. And you can sometimes end up trying to solve problems that didn't need to exist to begin with. So um, John mentioned, same here, customer can get an instant quote on my site, automatically captures their info, Zapier feeds that lead into Tinwiz, and customer has sent the link to book a square appointment. I follow up same day if they don't book their book um, on their own. So like, that's a process. He is, you know, John's built a mousetrap that works for him and so on. Um, sometimes those can get complicated. Sometimes they can be personalized. And sometimes there's, like I said, dynamics, dynamics that work in certain scenarios and not others. That's one that works for you. And, and that's why you're going to see um, you'll be able to eliminate some of those steps in there uh, automatically coming up. Now, Cody said, I disagree. There's only one way to cook a steak, pink and mooing. And I don't have the sound effect for the joke, um, but I appreciate it. And I love you, Cody. So, okay. We've got, <laughs> and Haas agrees. So we've gone a little off track and that's Okay. But I do want to get to the scenario where you simply say, hey, look, I'm in the back of a Ford Mustang. I answer a call. I give them a quote. I do not have time, even an extra two minutes to send them a proposal because I'm sticking a window. And like I said, it's not happening. I understand that. There's a plan B for you. Okay, so let's run through the same scenario and we're going to go plan B style. So plan B is, okay, this is not ideal, but I understand. I still recommend you force plan A to work, but if you can't do plan A, this is plan B. Simply, we're going to add contact. So we're speaking with, let's say, James. And James, what's your phone number? We get it. Perfect. And James, what's the year making model? Okay, you have a 1999 Camry. Remove, replace. Um, and we're quoting you 180 plus 100 removal. Okay, uh, you're going to think about it. Awesome. All right, have a great day. I'm gonna hit save contact, and I'm gonna go back, and I'm gonna start sticking that Mustang window. I'm gonna go finish the tint and so on. I'm, not, I'm gonna do nothing else for that person. So like, look, that was very minimal work. That was less work than if you were scheduling the person to come in. So if the person said yes, you would have had to do more work than that. So you can do that amount of work because you've been you were prepared to do that. So. If and I'm just laughing at John's comment. Wait, does a tint go on the inside? So okay. Let's recap. In that scenario, all I did was I typed in a name, I typed in a phone number, and I wrote a note, and I saved it. It took as fast as I could say it, I could save it, and we're done. Took a second. Now, that person is saved in here. There's James, came in at 4.33, which is my local time. And you can see something up here that says leads, and these are new leads. And what, what this is, is this is a way to sort the people that are in your TintWiz account. So if that's all I did, now what could happen is maybe I have somebody who's answering the phone somewhere else, or maybe I'm going to get to it later, or maybe my husband or wife can do it, or maybe my kids work for me, or maybe, maybe, maybe. But look, at some point in your day, you're going to have some extra time, whether it be today or tomorrow or somebody else will have some time. And you can go click into your leads. You can see James. You can click in there and you can read the notes and you can simply go to add project and you can do that same process of creating a proposal for James really quickly at any point. Now, you could also, if you wanted, manually contact James again, give him a buzz back and just say, hey, James, I was just checking if you got your car tinted yet and so on. Just want to follow up with you if you wanted. But again, I recommend just send them the proposal because sometimes like more and more people don't want to be interrupted. They don't want to get a phone call from somebody that they perceive as sales, but getting it through text message in a professional way, so much more valuable. So what we do there is we'd simply hit add project, automotive, and again, we're just going to fly through this real quick. We're going to do a Toyota. I think we said it was a Camry. We said it was a 99. We're going to create a project. And we're going to just fly through this in the way. We're going to go create proposal, remove, and replace. We're going to type in, let's say, expel... Let's say, and you can see all the films are in here. 
Um, if there's ever a film that you don't say in here, that's no problem. Just let us know. So we're just going to quote him on CS. Sorry, I'm getting a little distracted. We're going to quote him on CS and we're going to quote him 280 and that's remove and replace. And we're going to say removal included, remove, remove, I can't type right now, removal of film and replace lifetime warranty. And now I'm just laughing at the comments. I'm going to hit save and maybe we just send them one option. We're going to hit send. I'm going to hit send. And that just went to his phone. So James now has a proposal that looks like this in his phone. And this one just has one option. It's the one we quoted. It's 280, remove and replace lifetime warranty. They can see the brand. They can look it up. They can read about it. They can see some different like, you know, um, bullet points on the brand, regardless if it's Expel or it's any brand. And from there, they could potentially approve the proposal. Now you'll see here at the bottom too, when they scroll down, they're going to get a chance to see your reviews and anything else that you link up there. So this is now a chance to let them click on your reviews, read your reviews. And again, it's how, how else, if you pick up the phone and you're just like, well, 180 plus 100 to remove. All right, let us know if you'd like to get it done. Have a great day. And you hang up the phone. How are they ever going to see your reviews if they don't proactively look on their own? Well, this is a chance for you to put it in their face. Okay. Put it in their face. So this takes one second. This is for the person who says, I'm so busy. It's no problem. You're just going to save their name and their phone number. And a, and a note, just so you know that you're making model their vehicle and you can, you or somebody else can come back to these at any point and send them. And now because we sent that proposal, that person automatically came out of this new lead area and you see now we just have five instead of six because James has now become a project. And from there, you can always go to your projects and you can start, you know, sorting them and following up and resending proposals and so on. So Back to kind of why I'm bringing this up, okay? This isn't a training set. I mean, it's kind of a training session and this isn't a sales section, but it's kind of a sales session. But what it really is and why I'm really excited about it and why I want it, like why I'm, I want to just drive this point home as much as possible is the difference between the companies that are busy right now. Just be frank about it. The business that are, the businesses that are busy are ones that are have systems in place to keep track of their leads and their customers. Even if they're not using TintWiz, they're doing it and they're keeping track of it and they're succeeding. The ones that are doing really not so good right now are ones that don't have a way. They don't have a way to look up their old customers. They might have a caller ID, but they don't know the name of the person tied to it. They don't know the year make and models of who they quoted and they have no way to do that. Those are the people during this slower time that are going to feel it the worst. And it's because, you know, when it's busy, it's busy for all, all the seas rise. And, and it just could feel like, look, what I'm doing works, but it could be that what you're doing is not working. It's that you're just operating in a, in a place that has a high demand and maybe certain aspects of your business are working, but it's not everything. And these slower times start to expose aspects of your business that may not be working as efficiently as possible. So what I'm simply saying is, you know, like, I don't want it to be a sales pitch, but this is a, a plea to you that if you don't have a way to track your leads and follow up with them, whether you use TintWiz or use something else, use something. And there's no reason you would use something else other than TintWiz. I can very, very confidently say that. And that's whether you're a tinter, whether you also sell paint protection and ceramic coating and so on. You can do all that within TintWiz. And the reason I say there's nothing better for you to get started is because getting started takes an email, it takes your name, and you have an account an unlimited account that you can use completely unlimited for 30 days. So you can try this out for 30 days and see, hey, has this made me thousands of dollars or do I not want to do this anymore? And that's without any commitment, any putting in any payment information, any anything. That's simply you go in there, you make that account, put your logo, put your name, put your business name, put your address, and then you're going to instantly jump into add contact, type in a name, Jim just called. You put in Jim's phone number. You hit save contact. From here, let's create a first project for Jim. Jim can have many projects. We're just creating one. This will just be one of many. We're going to say, Jim, what's the year make and model? You have a BMW and hopefully it's a, maybe it's an, let's find a M4 and maybe it's brand new. And it's nice to ask for the color because when you ask for the color, you can pull up other ones that are that same color. We hit create project. And from here, we start creating a proposal. 
and we simply hit create proposal and we can start picking our options. And you can see it's going to show you the films you've mo used most recently in a list. And you can see I, I kind of go through a lot of different films on demos, but you're going to see this. And this is a list of every film. And these are already pre-filled in here. So if I type in, let's say, expel XR um, 30, you can see with like no setup, I typed it into the solution title. You need to type it into the search film type. So if I type in expel XR and I click on 30, you can see with absolutely no setup, you're gonna automatically get those notes in there. You're not typing them, they're automatically in there. From there, all you're doing is you're pricing it and you're hitting save solution and you're hitting send. And that's it. And if you want to add paint protection to this, you can. If you want to add ceramic coating, you can. You can add anything you want, whether it be a window film or another project, another product. And if it's an add-on, like if you are going to do PPF or you are going to do ceramic coating, simply click allow select together and allow select together. So if we pick, let's say like, you know, we're doing the bronze package or uh, let's say a silver package. Let's do, all right, there's going to be two got to be a little more specific. Ceramic Pro Silver. If we were going to do like, let's say a silver package in here, I'm getting a little laggy because of my computer, but if we were going to do a silver package in there, we were going to charge $1,400 and we charge allow select together and we hit save solution. You'll see that when we view that proposal that they could pick this film, but they could also add that package to it. So um, that's the difference between allow select together and that's a great way to upsell to partial paint protection film because you can upsell PPF, you can upsell ceramic coatings, you can do plus windshield, plus sunroof, you can show them good, better, best and it takes just a few seconds. And if you want to get fancier in here, like I said, you can even title this best heat blocking and you can save it as a, as a title there and you know, you can... Um, like I said here, you can add pictures and so on, and you can hit send. And sending it is that simple to their, you know, we don't, we didn't get an email address for Jim, no problem. We're going to send it to their phone. And when you send it, you can see that status goes from not sent to sent. So now that proposal has been sent. You can send it to as many people as you need. If you need to send to other people, you can simply replace that phone number and you could send it to Jane. I'm really creative with the names. I know hit send. And then you can see that if we go to send, you can see individually all the people it was sent to, and it's going to even show you uh, when it was sent and who it was sent to, the date and time. And when they view it, it'll show individually when it's viewed here. So that means like, especially for flat glass, if you're able to, if you're sending proposals to multiple people on a project, you keep track of who viewed what. And again, if you want to then move on with your day, but you want to have a way to follow up with these jobs, just simply go to proposals and you can say, all right, let me look through all of them. Or let me look through the ones that have been sent and not viewed. Let me look at the ones that have been viewed, but they didn't approve it. I can call them and ask them. Maybe they had questions. I can resend it. And again, resending it, just simply click in there. Simply go to send. I don't want to click on this one because this has a real person's phone number somewhere in there. But um, basically, the idea is, look, it's a name and a phone number. You get it anyway. Sending the proposal takes an extra minute or two. Try it. Just try it. Try it with every customer you have. Try it for a week or two and tell me if after a week or two, you don't see proposals getting approved at all hours of the night, a higher conversion and an automatic upsell on some of your jobs. So that's all I got. It's not really all I got, but that's, I think, a good stopping point because I haven't taken a breath for the last 44 minutes and I want to check out the com comments and so on. So um, Cody asked, did you add Ceramic Pro um, or did you type it in and save it? So Ceramic Pro is in there as a film type. So if we go to, let's say, back to that project, I'm going to click on leads and let's go to Jim. I'm clicking in here and you can see Jim now has one project. We could create as many projects as we need for him. Keep track of everybody's project in one place, regardless if they're automotive and so on. Let's click back into that project. We're going to go to proposal. We're going to go to add solutions and ceramic pro is in there as a solution. So if we go to, we type in ceramic pro, you can see that their new window film line is in there already, but also you'll see, and their paint protection, you'll see the gold package. And if we click that gold package, you'll see all the information will pop up on that gold package um, automatically. So all you need to do is price it and save it. And then you'll see what that looks like when we view it. And there it is. And again, um, just as Ha said in the comments, you can add pictures, 
to the proposals as well. So these can be pictures of previous jobs you've done. They can be like a highlight reel of your shop. They could show your waiting room and the cleanliness. They could be pictures that you've like specifically like, you know, wrote text on to like sell a certain product. So they could be like images from Ceramic Pro if you're selling Ceramic Pro or images from 3M like about the film. They could be spec sheets. They could be anything. They could be if you're doing like flat glass, a great one is just simply take pictures of the project of the person's home and include it on the proposal because a customer seeing their own pictures of their home on the proposal really, really feels professional and like you're on top of things. So pictures takes an extra minute, brings you an extra few, um, few hundred dollars, few thousand dollars as a return. So it really is about investing a little bit of time and getting a multiplier as a reward back to you. Um, so, you know, you, you have to understand, you do have to do these little things. You have to invest a little bit of time, but these little investments are what pays back. And if you don't do these little investments, you can't make a post on Facebook saying, hey, things are kind of slow. Do Facebook ads work? Because yes, Facebook ads work, but they're not going to work overnight for somebody who's just starting for the first time with no Facebook following, probably a few pictures. I mean, it's just not going to work overnight. It's not going to work like that. And if it does, please share it because I'd, I mean, I, I you sh if it works that easy, then I'd love to hear from somebody who turned it on overnight in the winter and all of a sudden started getting business. Um, usually factors are involved in there, like they're being part of a community already, um, it being shared by friends, family, and it's some sort of network. And, you know, there's, there's more things involved or kind of like ongoing building a community. But typically you don't just start a business, put it on Facebook with a brand new page, run an ad and start killing it. So that's like buying a lottery ticket, this is like the putting in like a day at the gym to improve your health. These are the things you have to do. A customer took the time to contact you. That's a lead. Make the most of it by taking these really simple, easy steps that I can go over again, but I've shown you in this video. Anybody can do. Anybody can. You can't be like, I'm not good with technology. You can't be like, wow, I don't have the time. I'm not a good typer. Like every single person can type a name and a phone number and hit save contact. Every person can click a couple buttons and add those proposals and send or add those solutions and send them. If you can't do that, then I don't believe you can tint windows. I don't believe you have a tint shop. I don't believe you're even on the computer. You're probably not going to listen to this video or see that video. Let's just be fair. So Let's jump in here. And I see that Haas mentioned Eric C. Nipsey's question. So I'm scrolling up. Okay. Nipsey said, so you can save Mama Ducky's proofs. Yes. Um, attachments, photo attachments, like the attachments and the solutions are an incredibly great place to include your, uh, for flat glass or for automotive, your mock-ups and design proofs. So for either one, whether it be flat glass and you're showing frost um, reveals or you're showing a, a perforated printed project on the front of a storefront or for automotive, whether you're showing a vehicle wrap or so on, like there's no better way than sending it to them as an attachment digitally. That way it saves you from having to send it through just their email and manually send an email. All you have to do is create that proposal, attach that um, image and send it to them. They have it. It's easy to reference. And, um, it's a great way to have that there timestamp dated. You can also, um, you can tag your uploads so that, you know, it's a mock-up and you can search your mock-ups later. That's a perfect place and, um, to a perfect way to use attachments in proposals. But I know there was another question, so I'm going to read up a little further. So Nipsey said, would TintWiz work for printing companies that print vinyl wrap? So yes, um, it would It would definitely work for that because again, like you're able to keep track of not just that mock-up, but like, you know, mock-ups typically go back and forth and back and forth. So like you're able to upload a version, timestamp and dated. And when there's a new version, you upload that additional version, timestamp and dated, and you keep that process going as an attachment. And let me get in there and I'll show you the attachments. Um, and you keep that process going because then you always have your versions in order. So you can always revert back to previous ones. You're not going to get confused, which is the newest one and so on. So a couple places you can save attachments um, just for yourself. Even if you're not going to send it to your customer, you can save your attachments right here in project attachments. So you can simply click that button. It's going to open your camera roll, ask you, do you want to take a new picture or do you want to uh, take a picture from your camera roll and upload it to your TintWiz? And if you upload, you can do multiple pictures at once. You can do videos, you can do PSDs, AIs, 
any sort of artworks and so on, and you can upload them there and they're saved there forever. You can tag them as before and after pictures or artworks or mock-ups or proofs or the approved design and so on, and then they're there forever. And like I said, including videos. And then of course, the other place that you can put those, if you're sending them to a customer, is simply attach them right here as an attachment in the actual solution. And then you're going to see that um, in the proposal, when they view it, they'll see that image right here and you can include multiple images, as many as you'd like to the solutions. So I'm just catching up on the comments. Um, Cody said, we have systems and I'm flustered as all hell. So dang busy and we literally just had our biggest November ever. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. And, and you're um, a great example of systems and I'm glad you're busy. And, you know, if you're not busy, you're going to have things that are in your control and at your fingertips to um, increase your business. Because, you know, if you're not busy, you can resend those proposals. You can follow up. You're not going to be sitting there twiddling your thumbs, wondering if you should start Facebook ads. Because that's not the time to start Facebook ads. Because usually when you're not busy, there's also a chance that you might not have the money to blow because you're facing um, potentially slow times and spending money on ads is a way to potentially, if you're already kind of in a hole because things are slow, it's a way to dig that hole a little bit deeper for yourself and add some stress to your uh, exciting winter. So whereas like something like this, it's in your fingertips, you can go in there and make it happen. So So John said another way to use Zapier at TintWiz, create a Zap that sends a new TintWiz leads to your Google contacts so you have customers info saved with name and everything. So you're not confused by a bunch of name and numbers in your text history. That's a, another great one. So John's mentioning Zapier, which is an integration, and you can get to the integrations in TintWiz simply by going to your settings from the business owner's account and going to integrations. And here you can integrate QuickBooks directly, which syncs everything up and is super helpful. And then you can integrate Zapier. Now, if you haven't heard of Zapier, think of Zapier as a bridge. It's it's a bridge. It's a bridge between TintWiz and just about every other app out there. And it allows you, depending on different triggers, to create different fun, like uh, integrations. So the one John just mentioned is pretty cool because like he said, it allows you to, um, you know, with doing no extra manual work, automatically save your leads as contacts. So if they call back, you already know who they are. Now, one of my favorite zaps that a lot of Wiz users use is a, a Zapier integration to Nice Job. And Nice Job is an app that pulls up, it's an app that um, automatically requests reviews from your customers. So basically, what you do is you create a Zapier account. There's a free account, depending on how many zaps you use. If not, you'll spend $20, $30 a month. It's worth it, I promise. Create a Zapier account. You create a nice job account. Nice job, I think $50 a month for where you need to be. $40 a month. Again, completely worth it. You have to do it. Trust me. Create the account. Minimal setup. You're going to put your logo, your name, your phone number. You don't have to adjust the campaign or anything. You can leave it as is. And then you're going to connect Tintwiz to Zapier. And in your Zapier account, you're going to create a Zap that basically, so when... A customer is paid in full on TintWiz, they automatically get a review request on Nice Job. And what that does is that just basically you set that up as a one time thing, takes a couple minutes, costs a little bit of money, but that means that every time you mark a customer paid in TintWiz, they automatically instantly get a text message asking them to leave your review. That review will link them to your Google page, your Google Places page. If they don't leave that review, they'll get two follow up emails um, a day and a few days later. What you can expect from that is about 15 to 20% of your customers leaving you a Google review. So that's one to two out of every 10 customers will leave you a review. So um, if not more, of course, how you get a review, the customer has to be happy. You had to do a good job. You had to be nice. But with that said, this extra step is the difference between the customer actually taking the action to leave the review or just like being really happy with you and you know maybe one maybe you get a couple of reviews a month that integration is a game changer if you need help setting it up just jump into the support and we can um help you in any sort of way if you jump into support something a lot of people don't know exists is the help center the help center is legit so like 
I don't typically go to help centers when I go to apps and things like that. But like I created, we created, my team created this help center. So like I like it a lot and I think it's extremely helpful. And there's tips and tricks. There's digging deeper. There's things like QuickBooks integration, Zapier integration, and so on. And <coughs> excuse me. These have screenshots. They take you step by step through the process of what we're talking about, like what I'm talking about when I'm saying like how to do zaps and so on. So definitely check out the help center. And then also there's also like obviously the live chat. You can always jump in a live chat and we can walk you through the process as well. So so again, back to the comments and Cody just said, I wait, I realized you're Michael Scott. Yeah, so all the, this is like the demo account that we do all the demos with. And it was just fun and easy to make all the users um, of this account characters from the office. So that's what we did. So I'm Michael Scott. And John said, the number of installs on the dashboard shows scheduled, not actually installed. Any way to change that? So, okay, these. So we are switching up the dashboard. You'll see it in an update. Uh, at the, we're doing an up. We have a huge update at the end of this month. A huge update, and we've just been like lumping updates together to do this big update. That's kind of a lot of great changes and some new features you're going to see in there. So we're doing that all at once this month. Then you'll start to see additional updates roll out um, through January, February, and so on. And what I'm getting at is you're going to see one of those updates has to do with. Um, what we're calling like a sales dashboard and that sales dashboard is going to i think kind of be a you'll see so basically the answer to your question john is <laughs> i'm getting a little ahead of myself let me pull the comment up on screen again to read the comment again he's saying that the number of installs on the dashboard shows scheduled not actually installed and i want to explain the reason for that and then what i kind of was leading into before was we do have a revision that I think will be the best of both worlds. And you'll see that in January, um, January, February of this year, but you'll have a lot of different updates before that. But let me explain. These four stats right here, these aren't obviously your only stats. These are what I call the pulse of your business. These are the things that I need to know, or you need to know, like on a minute to minute basis. So like when you open up your Facebook page, the first thing I do is I kind of click and I like to see like, was I tagged in anything? Is there anything where like somebody tagged me? Cause I need to attend to that. If somebody tagged me, I need to see that before I just need to see my feed, like random stuff. Like I need to see if somebody like called my attention to something. So I kind of click at the bottom of my feed and I look at like, did anybody tag me? I need to know that because I don't want to see tags like a week later. I need to see them as soon as possible. That's to me like kind of the pulse of Facebook. I want to see if there are new posts. I want to see if, do I have any new messages and so on? Okay, now relating it to TintWiz, these four stats to me are those things that I always felt are the most important. Whether you look at them now in your business or you don't, there's a reason they're there. Leads. Leads are anybody you add to the system. So whether they come in automatically from your website directly into TintWiz or you type them in like we've been doing throughout this video, leads keeps track of every single new person who gets in there because that is your total opportunities. And if you're only keeping track of quotes or people you're scheduling, you don't know how many opportunities you have. You don't know if one day you had 20 opportunities and you sold two of them, or you had 10 opportunities and you sold eight of them. You don't know. You have to know how many opportunities, every phone call, every email, they're all opportunities. Okay. They are. And when you know all your opportunities, things start to change. From there, we need to know, well, how many of those opportunities did we turn into a consultation? So today, how many consults we were we able to produce today? Whether we did it today or we did it, we're scheduling it for next week, we produced something that's super valuable, which is a consultation on our schedule. The same goes for this installation. So as John was saying, this installation number is Productivity meaning if you schedule somebody, whether you schedule them today or you schedule them for next week, if you added them to your schedule, they get added there because that is productivity for you because you create a sale, a schedule. You put somebody on the schedule. Again, you put them on the schedule for today, you put them for next week. To me, that is money. So that's why that's an important number because we don't need to know, well, we have 10 jobs scheduled today. That's easy. If we need to see the jobs we have scheduled today, look at your calendar. You can see that. But if we want to know what did we what did we work for today that's going to pay us back tomorrow, 
that's where we need to see how much did we produce, whether it's for today or tomorrow, because that's the number you need to be pushing up and up and up. If you're pushing today's number up and up and up, well, tomorrow is going to be when you're worrying about today. It's always going to be today and you'll always be worrying about it today. So by keeping track of your productivity, whether I schedule them today or tomorrow, I want to know that we scheduled another installation. Good job team. Good job me, whatever it is. And then lastly, amount scheduled. So that's a little different. That's going to be the dollar amount that you have scheduled for your business in the books this week calendar week. So that number and the reason why I want to show you that number and it's so important is because as a business you or whether you're a one person business or a 10 or a 100 person business you start to know hopefully how much you need to sell in a week. So let's just say one man tin shop and you say look in an average week we need to sell at least $7,000 in business in a 5 day work week to get by. Well, that number is going to show you how much you have in the books for this week. So if you only have 4,000 in the books, you can work to get that number up by scheduling more jobs. And if you have 8,000, you can say, wow, this week we already have 8,000 in the books. This is an awesome week. And that's why those numbers, again, there's other analytics that of course you're going to want to see. And we can do that in the analytics area right here. But the reason why those four numbers in particular are so important is because those are the ones that you can affect change on, on a daily basis. I need to know as a business owner, if I have somebody answering calls, I need to know, hey, we got eight opportunities today as in leads, or we got four. I need to know how many of those got scheduled. I need to know if they got scheduled as a console or install, and I need to know how much money are we going to produce in installations this week, which is this number. Okay. So super important. That's why these numbers are here um, for the dashboard. Now, with that said, you can always go into your analytics and you do have these different segments and there's about 40 different segments in here that you can pull different analytics on. And from here, we also have a new sales dashboard that we're working on, which is kind of what I started to stumble upon a few minutes ago that really brings all of it together. And I think we'll provide some next level insight into your business. But again, these are that's the reason for those four numbers. And I really stand by it that like you need, you're going to open TinWiz throughout the day and you're going to keep track of that number and you're going to see that number. You're going to watch it grow. You're going to compare it to last week. You're going to know what it is this month. You're going to know your sales last week. You're going to know what your sales are this month to date. And you're going to see those numbers consistently grow. And you're going to be able to also spot and affect change when those numbers, if those numbers start to slow down. So, that I hope answers your question, John, and um, provides some clarity. So, I'm just reading through the comments. Ever thought of making a tintier? I need to start using TinWiz. You do, Chamal. I agree. I'll put that one up on screen. Chamal needs to start using TinWiz. This is, look, if you're taking phone calls, if you're giving quotes, just at the level I showed earlier in this video, get their name, get their phone number, and send them a quick quote. That alone will change the game. You'll start adding pictures. You'll start leaving notes. Your life will become easier. It'll You'll see more. But do not be intimidated by like, oh, it's like a whole new thing or it's this whole new system. Look, add a contact. Everybody can do it. Type a name. Almost anybody can do it. Type a phone number. Anybody can do it. We're going to hit save contact. We're simply hitting add project. Automotive in this case. And I'd like to put a year make and model. I feel like it's important. You might as well. It makes, it's like, if you've ever heard the saying garbage in, garbage out, it has to do with systems like this. Basically, if you put in a little bit of effort, just a few seconds of time to put in proper information and do these steps. And then from here, you're just creating a proposal and look how fast it is. Like if I go expel CS, boom, you price it 180. I hit save. I hit send. That's it. I just did it. And I'm doing a live stream, so it's not even like I'm super focused because I'm kind of thinking about things and I'm doing it live. But I'm just saying, that took a minute. So like just that minute, put that proposal, that digital proposal in somebody's phone with your logo, with your address, with your phone, with the price you quoted them, with the brand film you quoted them on, with 
bullet points that highlight your film with your information about your company that you can customize and link however you'd like with links to your reviews and so on and move on with your day and do that for every single one. And then when you want to come back to your customers, like I said, you can always just hit come here and you can follow up in another day and hit send proposal and resend it. And you're going to be able to see when they view it and they're going to be able to approve it online and it's going to change, change how you do things. Um, Cody said, We've gotten 30 plus reviews since you told us about it. I don't know, two months, I guess. So 30 reviews, 30 plus reviews, and they've been using the nice job integration with TintWiz for about two months. 30 reviews, like, is freaking really good. And I know other shops might get 30 reviews in a couple months as well, and good. But if you're getting one, two, three, four reviews a month, that's not what it could be. Um, you can get at least one, two out of every 10 uh, customers to review you. And if you're doing a great job, it can be four out of five, five out of five. It really can be. But part of that is making it easy for your customers. So like, you know, by sending them that link and doing it immediately when they pay, like that's when they're most likely to leave your review because they just paid there. It's fresh. They feel accountable to it. They're thankful. It's, it's just, it's ready to go. And they're going to leave you those kind words because you just made them happy with that tint installation. And that link is easy for them to click. If you don't send them that link, you're relying on them to search for your company, find your company, click on Google reviews, kind of find it and figure it out. It's not the easiest thing in the world really with Google and then leave the review. The easier you make it for them, the more reviews you'll get for you. It's that simple. Cody said, hey, you missed my one comment about the films. I did miss it, and I don't know if I should go back because it's kind of, I might get a little confused on here, but if I miss a question, you could definitely feel free to copy and paste it and just put it in there. Um, oh, okay, I think I found it. I think I found it. Cody said, I know how I do it, but I figured I'd ask. How do you make solutions for multiple films at the same price? Like all our DRs are the same price. I just put in the title. Um, so the different shades and so on. So if you're not quoting shade, um, so with flat glass, I definitely recommend you quote shade because, you know, it helps them. You want to narrow it down for them. You don't want to, like, especially with flat glass, like if you're sending them a quote for flat, you you probably know what shade they want. Like you've, you've probably had a consultation with them. They saw the shades and so on. And if you don't quote shade, so if you don't decide with them, like, hey, so you like this, you know, Vision 30 or like Vision 40 or whatever it is. If you don't pick that DR, you like this DR15 or DR05, DL05 or whatever it is. If you don't pick that shade with them and you say, well, here's the... Here's the um, film. You decide on the shade. You're creating a nightmare for yourself in the future because when that customer says, okay, I'd like to do it, I don't know what shade I want to pick. Can you bring all of them and we'll put it up on the window the day of the installation? You're like, you're potentially creating a lot of uncertainty. So like, you know, you want to pick the shade at the time of the consultation, especially like you mentioned DRs and DLs and, and for flat glass and so on. Pick the shade with the customer and put it up there. Um, okay. I just saw a question come through for, from John. He said, I have another question. Can you make an update where you can create multiple projects for one customer on the same day? So a customer can have multiple projects on the same day for one customer. So like if we're talking about multiple projects, let's go into a customer with a project that we've added. So we have Jane and you can see here right now, a customer has one project. Now, if we were going to schedule an event for that, we can schedule as many events as we want for this project, whether they be consultations, installations, miscellaneous or anything. Now, if you want to have the pro uh, the customer was going to have another project on the same day, no problem. You're going to hit simply a create new project. Maybe they're going to have their home done the same day. Who knows? And for home, their address would have popped up, but we didn't ever get it. So I'm going to type it in here. We hit create project. And now we're in a flat glass project and we can create an event for any day you want. Now, taking it back to the contact, you can see now this is what the project looks like with two, uh, the contact looks like with two projects. So now Jane has two projects. These projects can have as many events on any days as you want. Um, they can have as many events as you want, as many event types, and you can have as many projects for a customer as you'd like. So as you do business with a customer, you'll continue to build this list. So it's super helpful for car dealers to keep all your projects in one place. And you can build this list out and it doesn't get cluttered when you um, get to 10 or you get to 20 or you get to 30. You can actually scroll through them. So Ha said could do ad service too. 
Um, if you were like, like, here's the way to think about it. Okay. Here's the hierarchy. Everything starts with a contact. A contact can be a person or a company, but everything starts with a, with a person or a company, an entity there from there, that contact or entity, the business, the person that it has projects. It can have as many projects as you want. Now, each project can have one proposal with as many options. It can have one price and it can have one invoice. So if you're doing one project, that's going to have one price for a customer. You can lump it into one proposal and one invoice. But if you're doing something that's going to require separate price quotes and separate invoices, then you're going to want to potentially do it as separate projects and go that way. Of course, just to complicate my explanation a little bit, you can always like have one project that has one invoice, but gets paid partially now and partially in the future. That's possible too. But I'm just trying to build that hierarchy because things like this, these systems, they're flexible. They're flexible so you can do things how you feel comfortable. But there is kind of a best practice. There is a hierarchy. There is like kind of a logic behind it. So you want to just kind of think of it like that. Is this, there's a person or a company, that person or company has projects. It can have as many as you want. You can divide them any which way you want. Um, and like for flat glass, for example, if you do a project for a flat glass customer and let's say you only do half the project, so you end up invoicing them for that amount, it's paid in full, that project's done. If you wanted to now do a project for the other half, all you do is hit duplicate down here at the bottom. And by clicking duplicate, it would actually create a separate project with the same measurements. If we had added measurements. Um, for that customer. So you can see now they have two projects at that address and it would have carried over those measurements automatically. So it's a way that you can um, split up flat glass projects in certain instances without ever having to retype projects, uh, retype measurements and so on. Jared said, crazy. I look over and my wife was watching this. I'm watching and like son Cody's watching it. The whole family on, on hook, on the hook. I appreciate it. I'm glad I do because today's one of the days where like, I, it's like, I, I, in my head, I'm like really excited because I, I don't know. I want, <laughs> I want to drive this point home because it's so important. I want to, I want to create like, look, either every single person who watches this video tries this and it works or you try it and it and you come back and tell me why it didn't work for you and we're going to figure out why and we're going to figure out how and we're going to make it work and we're going to figure that out or what went on but i but, but the point there is i don't want to leave any stone unturned with this because i i believe in it that much as a game changer for every single business and i believe that it's an easy first step into seeing such a huge value I believe that it's the difference between the 10 phone calls you take tomorrow to sell four of them or to sell six of them tomorrow. And because I believe that so firmly, I, I, I want to go out on a limb and that's why I'm trying to be so direct about this. I usually kind of dance around using tin whiz and I'm like, if you use it, use it. If you don't, you don't good. You know, it doesn't matter. It's like, it's all good. Like hopefully use it in the future, whatever. But being that it's summer, being that I've talked to so many different tin companies and it's a clear difference what works and what doesn't work. And if you're just pricing and hanging up, that doesn't work unless you have a huge amount of phone calls. And even then you're spending time on a phone call and you're not getting anything for it. So when you price somebody and you spend the time to answer their call and take their and, and quote them, you're invested now. So you might as well make that convert for you as best it can. And this is the step. So name, phone number, create a project, a quote, send it and, and, Prove me right in this and tell me it made you more money. So anyway, I guess, Jared, I'm glad you're watching this because this is one where like, uh, I brought it up to Cody, I think last week and we were like, you know, it's one thing that just like, there's no reason not to do it. Don't, don't skip it. Don't skip a single person. And there's two versions. Again, if you just caught this video midway through, there's two versions of what I showed at the beginning. There's the right version and there's the plan B and either one will work. They'll both be effective. You can just do whichever works for you. Um,
There's Mike. Mike, one of my favorite people in the world. He said he closed over $10,000 in one day in TintWiz using TintWiz proposals. Thank you for sharing that. And I'm, I'm beyond like humbled. Your shop is like anybody who doesn't know Mike um, or Mike shop. Mike shop is, you know, there's a lot of beautiful shops around the country and the world. Mike shop is something different. Mike shop is like, if you were a Tesla dealership, you'd strive to have a shop that looks like Mike shop. It's from the pictures and videos I've seen. It's the, I don't think there's a bigger place. Uh, the one of his shops. And um, it's not just about the shop, but it's about how he was able to get to that point. Um, the the way he's able to run so much business through there, um, you know, provide such quality, provide high price, or like not high price, but like provide prices that can pay the overhead that's involved in a, in a situation like that and not feel like he has to succumb to low prices. He can provide prices that reflect the quality his business puts out. Um, and what you know, is I just, again, want to point out about Mike is you got to, like, if you need tools for your business, I'm not just saying this, he offers a line of tools and fills a void in the industry that doesn't, it hasn't been filled properly before. So what I mean by that is he offers a line of heat demos that stick to your wall that are already designed, that are for every manufacturer, that are ready to go with light, like, like lights and glass and everything. And you literally can press a button and you can show the customer the difference in that heat demo. And a heat demo is one of those things, of course, there's ones that exist. There's ones where you have to slide glass in and out and risk the customer dropping them. You can scratch those boxes. You can have to design them. They could just be a black box on a counter. And yes, they still work, but he's designed a beautiful scenario that can just hang on the wall and anybody can use and a customer can use on their own without risking burning themselves or leaving it on or dropping glass or cutting themselves or so on. Another example of a game changer is the um, glass peel boards that he's developed. So everybody always asks, what's the best glass peel board, how to hang your glass and so on. Let me tell you, hanging glass on a wall is not that good of an idea. I'm not, I know that most shops have their glass hung on a wall, but let me tell you some downsides to that. Number one, you have to pick where you put that glass and then that glass is going to be there forever. And that means that if you kind of change the way you do things or things could be more efficient in another way, you're going to have a walk from your car to that glass for the rest of your life until you move it. You're going to be walking back and forth from that glass. Number two, when the glass is up against the wall, when you're spraying down the, the film, all that water ends up accumulating and dripping down that wall. So you essentially now need to create some sort of gutter system because if not, you're going to ruin your wall. Number three, you have to paint around that thing. You have to paint behind it. You potentially have to move it in and out. Number four, when you take pictures, that glass is in the back. Sometimes it looks good and it could be a pro. Sometimes it doesn't look so good and it can be a bad. Sometimes it can provide an unnecessary reflection that you don't want to see in your pictures. So what Mike has developed is a glass system, that a uh, peel board that rolls. It's on wheels and it's a big, sturdy structure that allows you to be flexible in the size of glass that you put in there, but you can put it where it's most efficient. So you can now put them in between cars and you can use both sides of it and double your production potentially and have two tinters using one side of each of that same peel board. It mount, you can mount your spray tank in there, it takes it off the ground, puts it on there as one piece. You can then hook your hose. Like that you there's a place for your heat gun. Like it's it's I don't mean to just go on like a sales pitch about this, but these are products that like I can't say enough about because I don't know I never really understood how there's not like this is what you buy. This is the best one. This is what you buy. It's like manufacturers all have a solution. People all have their solutions. People build things out of wood and Here's somebody who came along and, and did it and built a real solution, a, sh a solution that's shippable. There's a mobile version for you mobile tinters. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing. So anyway, Mike, nice to see you in here. And um, I definitely recommend if you're looking for tools, that's the way. Um, like if you're looking for shop supplies, if you're looking for ways to be more efficient, look into those carts, look into the PPF stations and, and pods and so on, because they really are game cha game changers. They're well engineered and they're made by somebody that you can see them in use. You can see that they have to be able to be efficient. They also have to be able to provide quality. So it's not about working fast or working cheap. It's about working the best way possible. So like to me, Mike provides a insight into, you go, what's one of the best businesses in the country look like for automotive window film, paint protection and coatings, and then how are they actually operating? And he's sharing that along with the tools that he uses to do that. Like, that's what the industry is about. That's what, like, I think right now, like, 
is a game changer in the industry because people like the internet's bringing this together and people like Mike stand out to where, and like many others, he's not the only one. I'm just talking about him because he left a comment in here. Um, but it brings together the industry and lets you help pick up pieces to model your business after, after the most successful businesses in the country. And that's beautiful. You're not wondering behind closed doors what somebody's doing. So, uh, Mike Powell said, Tintwiz took my flat glass to the extreme. And he said, Tintwiz closed me small town or Tintwiz locked me small, uh, small town, 83,000 my last flat glass. So like, I think Tindwiz locked him in for a job for 83,000 in his small or $8,300 in his small town. Um, customer happy, quick response and professional quote game changer. Um, okay. So, okay. Good question. Gabriel said, how does Tintwiz app compare to ceramic pro shop manager app? So ceramic pro shop manager app is something that's pretty new. Um, they just came out a few weeks ago. My best suggestion for you, and I mean this so truthfully, is like, if you want to get your answer to how it compares, um, try it, try it, just see how it compares. Go to Ceramic Pro Shop Manager website right now and sign up or try to sign up and then use it and get it on your phone and get it on your computer and like, just try it. Now I'm, I, I'm still going to answer your question. And I don't mean that in like a some sort of obvious or like, I'm not trying to be like funny or anything like that. But what I'm saying is I do truly believe that, you know, like you asked me for my opinion, so I'm going to give you my opinion because you wanted my opinion. But I do think for anybody who's saying like, Hey, is this the right option for me or so on? There's no better way, especially when considering different brands and so on than trying it yourself. Um, I love ceramic pro as a company. I think that they have done an incredible job with ceramic coatings. I think they've done their paint protection looks very promising. And I think as people and as a company and as a brand, they're freaking incredible. From what I've seen on their shop manager, I look, I commend somebody who tries. I, I'm not saying that again, trying to be funny. I'm trying to find the right way to put this to really get how I feel about it. I commend them for trying. I commend them for um, making a shop manager. I think that they're trying to serve their clients the best way possible. I think that they see that every business, even if it has great marketing, even if it has great products, there's no way to continue to scale and run a business efficiently in 2020 and moving forward without some sort of CRM. So I, I, I applaud them for doing it. And, you know, to me, it's an obvious thing. Um, as far as like, which is better, which is whatever, whatnot, like, Tin, like I can tell you with the like, wholeheartedness, Tinwiz, Ceramic Pro, it's Ceramic Pro Shop Manager, it's apples to oranges. They're different things. At this stage, their, their um, shop manager is more of kind of like a lead, lead a, a way to manage the lead system that they offer from what I've seen. And while I do know that they've mentioned they're like integrating like sales processes and so on down the future, I just think that like if you're asking me to compare it right now, it's apples to oranges. It's something that they just barely launched a few months ago. They're still working out the kinks and bugs. Um, and it's something that, you know, Tintwiz has been in development. We're in our sixth year in development and our for a year and a half or two years um, rolled out to the public. So different stages, different animals, um, different functionality. But again, I bring you back to try it all. Try it all and see what see what you um what you think because you can't get me to talk bad about Ceramic Pro um, or anyone just because like, hey, if you're you're making another app or you're making another CRM, like mazel tov, because, you know, I do believe it, it's needed. I believe um, competition only breeds like better competition. Innovation pushes more innovation and so on. But with that said, like, I don't I don't feel like that's like that's not like it's not competition yet. I think they'd be years ahead and I just don't see with what we've built so far, what we have lined up, like again, apples to oranges and I'll leave it at that. But, um, I'm not saying anything bad. I do think everybody should try everything, try it, see how far you go. And that's it. Um, Mike Powell said, I'm not saying that ceramic pro doesn't have support, but there's a better individual that supports and works for you. Like Eric, when I met Eric a year ago at the tint he asked me why I didn't use tint Wiz. I stressed my issue, but he said, just stay with me and showed me I was missing things, sales quotes, customers, et cetera. Thank you. Um, I 
won't ever move away or change. So like, look, when I met my pal, like I, I, I believe he, he was saying like, you know, we were, we were talking about Tin Wiz and he was like, I don't use Tin Wiz. Like you need to tell me more about it. I don't even understand it. It kind of seems complicated and so on. And you know, my angle with that is like, I'm more than happy to explain it and to teach you, but like, don't feel a pressure of like, man, I have to learn it overnight or something like that. There's no pressure. But um, he did over time adopt it for his flat class. And like he said, it's been successful and Mike's an awesome guy. And I, I couldn't be more happy for how successful he's been with flat class, especially this year, um, over this year. And the growth has been tremendous. And, you know, he's, he's one of those people that like, he's, he's Mike, you're one of the, uh, you're the fuel to the, it's not about small town. Anytime somebody brings up a small town, Mike Powell can come in and go, you want to talk small town? Somebody like John Little can come in and go, you want to talk small town? There's, there's tons of small towns. It's not about small towns. Um, I understand why perception could be that. If you're in Miami, I'm in too big of a town. If you're in LA, it's too big of a town. If you're in, you know, a small town, it's too small of a town. And it's not, um, it's not that. Cody, another example. And I think as he put it, it's Delaware. Like it's, it's, it's Delaware. And why is he so busy? It's not because it's a small town. It's not because it's a big town. It's because of how people run their business, how they have, how they do their marketing and, and so on. There's a lot of factors go into it. One of them is being organized with your leads. Um, Gabriel said, I signed up for Ceramic Pro, but I didn't really use it because I found it confusing. I have a feeling that Tint Wiz is going to be a better option. Well, Gabriel, you brought, you, your answers, you said it better than I could have said it. So <laughs> thank you. Um, another thing, like, as far as like, look, when people say, like Mike said, um, and, and Haas said, like, I think, and Cody maybe, um, you know, when people look, when people point to me as somebody like, Hey, you don't have Eric and so on, like you do have to consider support. Okay. You have to consider where is something going? Um, you have to consider what it is now. You have to consider where it's going. You have to consider what happens when I have questions. Are they going to continue to develop it? Does this thing give me errors? Is it glitchy? Is it confusing? What happens when I hire somebody? Can I add more users? How much will it cost me if I grow? Like these are all things that you take into the equation. So like there's no way I'm going to sit here and tell you like, oh, use it because of Eric. But I will tell you, you should take those things into consideration and, and just simply use the app. Go through there. See if you see any errors. See how fast it is. Compare it to the speed of Facebook or other apps that use on a daily basis and just feel it out and get to use it. The other thing is um, take advantage of the support. You can go into support and if you're confused, use live chat. Live chat with us and ask us questions. Schedule one-on-one -on -one training. One of the nice things too is if you have a part-time person, you hire somebody, they work with you, whatever it is, you have somebody who wants to help you, it's easy to add them as a user and they can schedule their own training and it's free. So like Support is a feature, okay? Because it's kind of, it's a big part, you know? Like, it's not just about, it's not just about, like, give me a list of the features. It sounds good. It's not just about what's what's simplest or what sounds good or what's shiny or what's cheapest or what's easiest. It's about what's going to get you from A to Z, from the beginning of the race to the end, from the beginning of the cornfield maze to the end of the cornfield maze um, with the most success. And, you know, I, 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 I thousand wholeheartedly believe that it is Tint Wiz. And I hope this video today um, provides everyone with one easy step, whether you're using Tint Wiz or not, that I know anybody listening can accomplish the same day. Whether you're listening to this live or listening to this after, you can download the app from the app store. It's going to take you like three seconds. You can create an account. It's going to take you like 20 seconds. And you could put your first customer in and send a first proposal. That's going to take you about three minutes, maybe your first time. So I'm, I'm asking for an investment of about four minutes, five minutes from anybody at any time. Go from there. Give it a try for a week or two weeks or a month and give it a try right now when it's starting in the slowest season, when you have the time. Give it a try. Every contact gets in there. Every single person gets a quick proposal. Tell me it doesn't work. Come back to another Tint Wisdom live stream. Let me know. Send me hate messages through DM, come into the comments here and call me out live. If you do what I'm suggesting you do, then I want to hear from you if it doesn't work from you. I want to hear from you if it does work for you too. But what I'm saying is I, I mean it when I say like, this isn't a claim. This isn't a do this and, you know, sign up and goodbye tomorrow. This is a try this out. 
do what I showed on this video. Watch the video. It's on. If you're listening to it, you can pull it up on YouTube or you can pull it up on the Tint Wisdom um, Facebook. Do what I'm saying. Do it consistently. Do it for two weeks. There's a 30-day free, free trial. Do it for 14 of those 30 days and just see if it worked or not. That's it. We'll go from there. Um, hour and a half just talking about Tint Wiz. I feel very appreciative to all those who left um, comments today. Everybody who watched, obviously, as always. But thank you for spending so long, um, you know, hearing me breathlessly talk about Tint Wiz. And um, obviously, like, thank you for everybody for, like, all the support, all the positive comments. Um, they're all pretty positive. But especially, like, thank you. Thank you for supporting Tint Wiz. And thank you for being a part of it. I can, you know, um, can we get a voiceover? Can we get a voiceover? What's the voiceover? What do you mean by the voiceover, Josh? I'm not sure what you meant by the voiceover, but um, what I'm trying to say is um, try it. No matter who you are, no matter what, you, what you're doing right now, try this. Um, if it's not your own business, go to your boss. I'm not trying to make this a sales thing, but like if you bring something like this to your boss and you say, let's try this and it is successful for that company, you do get brownie points as an installer, as a consultant, whoever you are in the company, you do get brownie points like um, for doing something that positively impacted that business. So like, you know, you can't just be like, oh, that's not my thing. I just install. That's cool. But like, do you want to see you installing more vehicles or do you want to see like potentially like less business in the shop? So like it really does. Um, I got you. Josh is saying speak an appointment instead of typing in everything. So <laughs> let me look into that. Like typing in like type commands, like everything's a type command. I think, I think that could, I think that that sounds, I like how it sounds, frankly. I feel like it's a lofty goal, but I feel like it's a goal that has 2021 written all over it. Um, so let me get back to you on that, Josh. I like the idea. I like that idea a lot. Um, so, okay. So that's it. We'll wrap it up. Um <laughs> That's a funny one from John. Um, so we'll wrap it up again. Thank you everybody for listening and, um, and we'll be back next Wednesday with Chris queen for a live tint wisdom. And I'm looking forward to it. And anybody who has any questions, if you want to try this out, if I haven't convinced you and you still have questions, if it's not simple and you still have questions, download the app in the app store, you can do it in the Apple app store and the Google play go to the support area and live chat with us or, and, or schedule a one-on-one -on -one training. It's a calendar. There's times, um, there's times that I believe are, so you can see there's a lot of availability coming up. Like if you needed a Sunday, a Monday, a Wednesday, whatever it is, and you can actually schedule your own one-on-one -on -one training session. We'll go over it again, but you don't need to, you can use the live chat. You can follow this video. That'll get you far enough to be successful and you'll get the hang of it from there. So, um, So yeah, that's that. Thank you all for um, for joining me on this one. I thoroughly enjoy talking about TinWiz. So this was one of my favorite ones. I hope it was helpful. And I really look forward to hearing from everyone who actually puts this into place. Um, today's December 2nd, and I hope there's some people that um, put it into place as soon as December 3rd. So um, thank you all again, and have a great evening. And I'll see you next Wednesday, same place, same time. Bye-bye, everyone.